Observers from the European Union, the Economic Community of West African States and the African Union have congratulated Liberia on the peaceful conduct of its presidential and primary parliamentary elections on October 10, 2023. Andreas Scheider, head of the European Union Observer Mission at a press conference, said these were the first post-conflict general elections solely organized by the Liberian institution, a largely peaceful and vibrant campaign in which fundamental freedoms were mostly respected. The mission notes that the polling process generally proceeded smoothly and in a largely peaceful atmosphere, and eligible voters were able to freely participate in the process even though the long queues, congestions at the voting precinct, and the slow pace of the process led to some grumbling and agitation by voters. Overall, the mission notes that the Liberians were able to freely exercise their constitutional rights in, a, in peaceful elections, and therefore implores all aggrieved parties to use the existing election dispute resolution mechanisms to address their grievances and to do so within the provided time frames and condition in order for Liberia to continue to improve its electoral process. These were the first post-conflict general elections solely organized by the Liberian institution a largely peaceful and vibrant campaign in which fundamental freedoms were mostly respected was mirrored by the abundant use of state resources uh, by the incumbency, distorting the level playing field. A well-handled electoral process took place in an atmosphere of mistrust against the institutions. The electoral day showed Liberians' democratic commitment and was positively assessed by the EU election observation mission observers, but, but high turnout, cumbersome procedures and the implementation slowed the contacting of... I'm now joined live by Samuel James Pato, he's a National Program Manager, Federation of Liberian Youth and the coordinator of the Youth Election Situation Rooms a Room. He joins us from Monrovia, the Liberian capital. Uh, Samuel, thank you very much for your time. Uh, you just had Andres Shida, the head of the European Union, Observer Mission at that press conference saying that this uh, were the first uh, post-election or post-conflict general elections solely organized by the Liberian institutions and he described it as largely peaceful and a vibrant campaign in which uh, you know freedoms, fundamental freedoms are mostly uh, are respected. Do you agree with the statement? Uh, thank you very much and greetings to everyone listening to us tonight. Well, I think and I agree with um, the EU election observation mission that um, this indeed was a very peaceful elections. It was also the very, very first election solely coordinated by the Liberian, you know, um, institutions and organizations. Um, we had no external influence in organizing these elections. We had our joint security forces managing the electoral process while our electoral management bodies managing the process. And we had a very, very peaceful electoral process, you know, that's what a massive turnout of young people. So I do agree with him that indeed, um, these were peaceful processes and the fundamental human rights of Liberians in elections observation were, you know, um, and elections participation were, you know, observed. Uh, you're a young person and you're also a, a coordinator of a youth organization. What are your thoughts on the role young people played in the election um, during the campaigns and the election itself? in possibly maintaining a peaceful and vibrant atmosphere? Well, I am reading the space library youth as the second most active youth in the world when it comes to civic and political participation. And um, that was again demonstrated on the elections day when over 80% of persons standing at various queues across the country constituted young people. From our youth election situation room, we receive um, um, a number of reports that um, you know young people are not in their numbers, and we cannot be or could not be any prouder than the young persons of area who turned out to exercise their constitutional rights. So essentially, whatever decisions that have been taken in elections are a reflection of the decisions taken by young people 
that dominated the queues and lines, you know, across the country on elections day. Um, and James, when do we expect the results to be announced, and why is it taking this long? So um, the, the National Elections Commission um, provides preliminary reports and results every 4.30 p.m. GMT. Um, today was a third of some of those announcements, and we've seen that the ruling coalition Democratic change has taken a very, very, very slightly ahead of a major opposition leader, Joseph Nimabwakai of the Unity Party. And um, as results have been reported from across the country, right now we report that um, from the National Election Committee, 25% of the voting places have been are, are reporting results. And before October 25th, when the final election's result is expected to be announced, we hope that um, by then Liberians, be, Liberians have an appreciation of who you know, has been elected president, whether on first ballot or whether there will be a potential um, run of elections. Because according to our constitution, um, one must obtain at least 15 plus one of the total uh, cumulated vote to be declared winner of these elections. Seeing a lot of young people across the country being elected or not being elected to be um, presumptively based on preliminary results um, across the country, across different places. We see a lot of incumbents um, lawmakers, representatives, and senators being unseated um, by, you know, their fellow you know, oppositions across the country. So it's a very interesting election. The country is getting vibrant and active, and um, social media is buzzing with the events coming in. We'll have, to, uh, you know, potentially a very good election um, and results and Right. Uh, Samuel James Pato, uh, thank you so much for your time. Thank you.